Hello and welcome to It's Only Electric. This is the Zeker 001 Privilege All-Wheel Drive. I have been driving this car for a week now and it's time for a full review. Let's start. Zeker is currently offering two models on the European market today. This one and a smaller mid-size SUV called Zeker X. The Zeker 001 though is a big shooting brake and shooting brake is something in between a sedan and a station wagon. More about the practicality soon. And as I said, it's a big car. So measuring 4.95 meters in total length with a wheelbase of three meters, curb weight just above 2.3 tons and it's wide i mean almost two meters i had a hard time fitting it into my small garage this is the privilege all-wheel drive version you can tell that by looking at the two-tone color scheme here with the black roof line together with this blue nice metallic color gives the car bit more of a sporty and sophisticated look than going for a single color it also brings bigger wheels in this case 22 inch wheels 265 40 all around heavy but really good looking another thing that you get is all-wheel drive so two motors one here at the front putting out 200 kilowatts one at the rear also putting out 200 so combined 400 kilowatts of output 544 horsepower 686 newton meters of torque should be able to do 0 to 100 kilometers per hour 3.8 seconds top speed 200 kilometers per hour so this is a driving machine it's big but it's powerful and quick another thing that's included in the privilege package to reduce the noise and uncomfortable sides of running on big wheels is air suspension and it doesn't stop there because it's not only a air suspension which is adjustable height wise it also comes with active dampers so it is a active air suspension really nice package uh, i wouldn't drive this car with these wheels without air suspension so all this power is companioned by a big nmc battery pack with a gross capacity of 100 kilowatt hours and a net capacity of 96 translates into a great WLTP range of 585 kilometers so that's good for such a big car when it comes to charging charge port is placed here on the left the driver's side at the rear same place as Tesla uh, is using and charge speeds DC charging fast charging has a capacity of 200 kilowatts 10 to 80 percent should be done in around 30 minutes when it comes to home charging also impressive 22 kilowatts three phase support let's have a look into the frontal design a very sleek almost froggish look with a wide stance i really love the design of this car daylight running lights here at the top and led lights this is the headlight unit the main headlight unit some air ventilations here airflow direction closed front as usual on almost all electric vehicles a frontal 360 view camera a radar underneath, parking sensors still available on the Zeker cars. All in all, a sophisticated and sporty look, almost Porsche design here. That wide frontal stance also goes here at the back. It looks really big and powerful from behind. It's low to the ground and really wide. High-tech lighting here at the back. An integrated light bar going through the whole rear end of the car with the lit up Zeker logo at night and some nice start and closure animations. Really high tech integrated lighting. It goes for the whole car actually. And uh, three cameras here at the rear view one big at the top, one here, and one down below. As you see, also an integrated braking light here hidden into the rear air spoiler for directing the flow but also making the car look a bit more sporty and as you see as i said earlier it is not a sedan it is neither a station wagon somewhere in between it's a shooting brake you see the angle of the rear here really nice and sporty looking 
that also bring some practical aspects. Powered lift gate, and as you see, this is the big difference from a classic sedan. It's a lot more practical. 539 liters of boot capacity here at the back, companioned with a small frunk of 32 liters. At least gives you some room for one or two cables. And this comes with a double floor, so we can remove this or we'll lower it to get some extra amount of storage. This one is removable and the parcel shelf is attached to the rear lid to make it easy. Two cargo hooks to securing your cargo. And since this is the privileged version, this also comes with a Yamaha subwoofer here at the boot. Uh, foldable seats split into two parts, 40-60. Unfortunately, it's not 40-20-40. When it comes to towing, it is possible to equip with a tow hitch. It's powered and you see here is the button for it. This one doesn't have it, but with a total tow capacity of two tons for the all wheel drive version, for the rear wheel drive version, it's one and a half ton. Another neat feature is that the air suspension also help you with some practicality here at the rear. There is a button here where you can lower the air suspension. You hear that? That's nice. And the purpose of that is to make it easier for you to load the rear. Let's bring it back to the highest position. And uh, I mean, all in all, I think this is a fairly practical package. It's a big car with a fairly big boot capacity. Uh, I'm a bit sorry for not having the 4020 set up. Otherwise, it's a good package. Let's check out the back seat and the interior of the Zeker 1. And uh, let's start with the door sound. As you saw, frameless doors. Very solid for being frameless. Uh, normally frameless doors are a bit vibrating when you close it gives you kind of a broken sound that doesn't go for this one and as you see i'm sitting really laid back now and the reason for that is that the backrests are actually adjustable the angle of it so you can do that in two ways uh, let's do it on the screen here first let's see i don't know if you can see that on the screen but uh, this is the most straight position available and uh, when I sit like this and uh, the front seat is adjusted off the my driver position <laughs> or in this case my passenger position and I'm 193 uh, or six foot four I have a couple of fingers almost four fingers of space before my knees touch uh, the frontal seat and my Shoes are really easy to squeeze under the front seat and this is in a very low position anyway So good amount of, of leg room here at the back. Unfortunately, the panoramic glass roof doesn't go all the way to the back uh, Means that you don't have that much of a headroom if you are tall like me, but uh, I'm not complaining because I'm actually not touching uh, The headliner with my head. I only feel it with my hair. So I have like one or two, one and a half finger of extra headroom uh, left before touching it. So it's still comfortable. And this is the most straight seating position. If I lean it backwards, I may have more space. Let's see about that. It's, it's the same amount of, of headroom uh, and this uh, seating position. Seating position, as you see, uh, as in most electric vehicles, you don't have that good amount of thigh support, but I may be too tall for <laughs> telling that. Uh, I'm still sitting good here. It's a good uh, position. The materials are nice. This is fake leather, half fake leather and half kind of a Alcantara feel, perforated, not ventilated. The two other positions are heated. You can control that here at the small screen at the rear. So the screen is actually made for controlling things like the air conditioning, some media control. You can skip song, adjust the volume and control your seat. You can also turn on and off ambient lighting and the reading light here at the rear. So some nice controls. And if you don't want to use the screen for adjusting the backrest, you can actually use 
the mid armrest here. If I can pull it out, yes, do we have it? So the mid armrest is a nice looking one. One thing that I don't understand is, I mean, the light color scheme here is beige, but suddenly there's a white plastic piece here. Doesn't match the other parts of the interior. Possibility to store a book or two small phones maybe, uh, two adapter cup holders. And as I said, you can also control the backrest from these two buttons. One for the left side and one here for me. So back to the mid console, just above the screen, you have two manual adjustable air ventilations. They are actually companioned by air ventilations here at the B pillars. So I expect really good airflow and fresh air here at the rear. So underneath the screen here, you have a hidden compartment storing two USB, USB ports, one USB-C delivering 60 watts, meaning that you can actually charge your laptop on it. To the right, you have a regular USB-A port. The other things when it comes to comfort is the headrests. This is a nice feature. They are adjustable height-wise in Y-axis, but not in X-axis. The thing you can do is to pull these out. It's like wings. You can adjust like on airplanes, you know, and this will give you some kind of a better sleeping position if you want to lean towards the sides. Also a headrest here at the middle. This one though is not adjustable height-wise. You can actually control the passenger screen in front of you to give you some extra amount of legroom. You can also adjust the backrest position. So let's make sure that no one sits in that position when you do this. Plenty of room for me as a tall guy. Perfect, I can travel like a king in this back seat. And when it comes to the materials and quality in general, this is really a premium feel. I mean, all the materials, soft touch, Alcantara inlays, nice pattern, good quality plastics. This one looks like aluminum, but I think it's plastic, but good quality plastic in this case. And the housing for, for the, the tweeter, aluminum, also Alcantara finish here, soft touch, cushioned armrests, this fake leatherette, uh, nice touch and feel to the buttons and a storage for bottles here. This lower part is hard plastic, but it looks good and feels good. Zeker doesn't seem to try to save money here at the back seat. And I like that. I mean, I think that rear passengers should have the same comfort and quality feel as in the front. And I think that's one of the main definitions of a premium car. Let's jump over to the front. Same touch and feel, same materials here at the front. Very nice touch everywhere. I mean, soft touch here at the top. Alcantara inlays around the head-up display. Uh, the Alcantara also goes in a beige variant here at the middle. The same plastic pattern, integrated ventilation. This is, by the way, the midnight blue color combination, interior color. It's extra, it's not free. I would go for the charcoal standard black edition. I uh, think that looks better and is more practical because it's not that prone to stains. But a bold color, I like the blue and beige combination. It's a good looking car, a good looking interior. And to the materials, Alcantara inlay around the head-up display. Yes, it has a head-up display. Otherwise, fake leatherette with some nice stitching in the blue tone. Hidden air ventilations, uh, digital adjusts itself. Uh, the plastic pattern goes here at the front too. And then you have this a gold color with this uh, beige Alcantara hidden air ventilations here too. Some haptic touch buttons here at the middle. Let me press one. Very quick and responsive. One more time. I'm just slightly touching it. It opens immediately. You can also open the boot that way. Turn on the hazard lights and some uh, defrosting and defogging functionality. Let me close that and turn that off. Underneath that, there is a Qi charger, a volume knob and a play and pause button if you press it. Uh, to the left of that one, you have the gear selector where you can select drive, neutral or reverse. 
and underneath that a parking function. And the gear selector is actually rather nice, also covered in this rosé gold, and on top of that this blue leatherette with some stitching. Nice feel to it. You can almost like do a sniper shifting without anyone seeing. Look at this. Reverse. Drive. No one even noticed. If we move downwards, we have two adapter cup holders, one smaller and one medium sized one. And the armrest is cushioned, divided into two parts with a storage compartment, fairly deep pocket here, two USB-C ports, one for data and a power outlet, 12 volt outlet. So good charging capabilities there. Underneath here, you have a storage compartment this one doesn't contain any USB-C ports, but it's some extra storage. And I think we have fragments underneath here. Yeah, it feels like that. I'm not sure. But some extra storage, uh, instead of just closing it, you can still have some stuff there. And when it comes to storage in general, you have fairly generous pockets here in the doors, with uh, the possibility to store two bottles at least. And as I recently showed, you have the glove box and this storage compartment. So plenty of storage here at the front and some storage at the back. So practical in that manner too. The head-up display is companioned by two screens, an OLED main screen that's 15 inch, very bright, nice color, perfect darkness to it. I love going for OLED or AMOLED screens. They really lift the experience. That one is also companioned by another screen, and that's a slim 8.9 inch instrument cluster. Also good resolution to that one. Some nice graphics and nicely implemented just in front of the steering wheel. And I see it fairly good and the information on it is big enough to be able to see all the details. Uh, it's a round, fairly small steering wheel. I like the design of it, goes in the same blue color as the rest of the car. One thing that's a bit hard to get used to is the haptic controls. They look amazing, but the control of them are not equally good as the looks. And I think I've seen pictures of the updated Zeker going for joysticks instead. And I think that's a really good idea. It doesn't look as good but it is so much easier to use because the only thing you use these as is like a joystick. So it, the functionality of it depends on what you see on the head-up display. So the right side is mainly to control media, like skip song, adjust the volume, etc. So to the left, you have the driver aid functionality, fairly cleverly implemented functionality of the buttons here. The mid one is uh, when you double tap it, you activate the LCC and that's the driver assist functionality, keeps you in the lane, uh, keeps the distance, drives for you as long as you hold the steering wheel. It's comparable with the Tesla's autopilot and underneath that you have a cross and that's for cancelling it. At the top you have a round arrow and that one is clever because what you do with that one is that when you adjust the speed limit uh, above or underneath the actual road speed limit, uh, it sticks that way. And if you want to go back to the new speed limit or the current speed limit, just press that one and it jumps back to uh, the speed limit and adjusts the speed of the car. So that's a neat feature. To the left, the touchpad, and that's to adjust the speed. Upwards is faster, downwards you decrease the speed. Uh, left is to decrease the amount of room between you and the cars in front of you, and to the right, yeah, you get the point. By the way, it's a powered steering wheel, so you adjust it on the screen, exactly as you do with a Tesla, for instance. And on top of the steering column, you have driver monitoring systems. Let's jump over to the seats. So powered seats, uh, ventilated in three steps and heated on both sides. On top of that, Privilege also brings massage seats. And it's a really nice massage with a couple of different programs. You can adjust the the strength of it in low, medium, high. I always run it on high, but I must say that this is a kind of a neo-class massage, not the classical European, more softer massage you get. This is really nice and it's really relaxing. 
gives you a good feel and can get you and help your driving a couple of kilometers more with that one active. I really love it. One thing that I missed though, uh, on the seat adjustment. The angle is great uh, for my thigh support. As I said, I'm tall, so 193 centimeters tall. I can find a really good driver position in this car. But what I miss is extendable thigh support. Doesn't exist in this car. And I think that's sad. The other thing is the headrests. They are static. Uh, you can't adjust it whatsoever. Uh, exactly as in the BYD seal I tested recently, last week. And I really think that a premium car in this segment with uh, massage seats and in this size and in this price class, I really think that at least the headrest should have been adjustable. Otherwise, I think the driver position is good. They are a bit to the wider side, even if you have some nice bolsters here at the sides, also at the seating position, gives you a okay amount of support when driving a bit harder, but uh, I have a fairly wide back, but still feel that the seats are a bit too wide. Could have been a bit more narrow to give you that extra amount of driver support. Another thing that's included in the privilege package is the premium Yamaha sound system. I haven't seen any Yamaha sound system for a while now. Honestly, I thought they like died, didn't, didn't exist anymore. But I must say that I'm really impressed by the sound quality of this car. It's a 12 unit system uh, with a subwoofer at the back, but it has also woofers in the doors and it puts out an amazing sound. I mean, it has this quick punch. You feel it, you feel the vibration in the doors when you have your arm uh, resting on it, but doesn't give you any squeaks or any missed sounds, no matter how high. I crank up the volume so it doesn't distort at high volumes at all. It's a very warm sound, but the good thing with that, it is not only a good amount of bass, but also have really crisp and clear mids and highs. So the main screen and the software, uh, as you see here, this is the starting page or landing page, main area, and this is customizable. So you can change the position of the tiles uh, add tiles, remove tiles, etc. It's uh, a certain set of tiles. You can't add whatever you want, but there is a couple of options at least. Car settings is the car icon, and this works almost the same as it does on, on a Tesla, if you're used to that one. All the controls are uh, collected here at this menu. And the quick settings is where you can customize and change the dry mode. Uh, the suspension height, etc. And you have seat and uh, steering wheel adjustment. So what you can do here is that you uh, can adjust the driver and passenger position. Also the back seats actually, uh, the back rests on the screen. Uh, so that's a neat feature. Uh, good thing though is that of course you have the possibility to adjust the front seats with the help of the buttons on the side on your seat as usual. Uh, nice feature, as I said, is the seat massage. Uh, different programs, four different programs, uh, and three different levels of harshness. I mean, I'm not going to go through all the details, but as you see, the layout is good. It's easy to find the information uh, and the settings here by navigating on the screen. And most of the functions is, is collected in this way. Uh, charging, that's interesting to look at. Charging sub-menu helps you to set the actual charge limit and uh, some other functions like how it shows the actual range if it's standard that's uh, WLTP uh, range estimation and that's the dynamic one adapts depending on your drive style uh, you can also have some charge schedules for trips or regular weekly schedules uh, you can also without some energy so it's not only chargeable you can also use it as vehicle to x vehicle to load so you can uh, connect the adapter to get out some power from it you can also toggle on and off the chi charger uh, if you don't want to charge your phone or want it to be active the car also has 
the capability of preconditioning of the battery pack, which means that it can optimize the charge curve. So if it's cold outside or if it's too hot, it will precondition the battery if you navigate to a fast charger, a very important feature. App drawer, we have all the applications separately stored. So as you see here, you have support for wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto. You also have a better route planner as a separate application in the car. Uh, a camera that's for taking photos inside the cabin, etc. Uh, this is a neat feature. It's my car. Uh, gives you some extra information. I especially like the trip statistics and information here. Plenty of info uh, if you are into that. It's easy to navigate. It's fairly snappy. Sometimes I get some loading screens, but as you see, it's quick. Uh, it's a 2.5K resolution, so the, the objects, the graphics are nice looking in most of the cases. And it, as I said, it's responsive. And I'm not really missing any specific functions. And I haven't seen that many bugs when using the screen this way. Uh, so uh, I think they have managed to make the software better uh, than it was from the beginning, of course. So obviously they are pushing out a lot of op uh, over the air updates. I have seen some of them myself. So uh, a evolving system. I think it's enough. Uh, let's take this car for a drive. Yeah, so, so still not on par with like BMW or Tesla when it comes to the immediate push, but it's nice and it is a big car. I mean, almost five meters and 2.3 tons. That's a lot. Let us just talk about the dry modes. Uh, there is a couple of ways to switch dry mode. One is using your voice. The voice command works almost every time. Let me try that. Good afternoon. Activate eco mode. Save it again. Activate economy dry mode. Setting driving mode to eco. Yeah, so it works, but you need to know what to say. So the dry modes can be switched with your voice or deeper down in the quick settings in the car menu. The quickest way though is to do it by swiping from the top downwards. There you have at the top the different dry modes. So you have comfort, eco, sport, snow, sand, and off-road. And finally also a customizable mode called customize or custom and that's the mode you use to adapt it after your preferences so now driving on eco just to feel how it behaves and it's a lot more slow on the accelerator actually doesn't give you all the power it seems to be limiting the power the output to half of the amount, so 50% output. Uh, kilowatt meter here on the instrument cluster actually stays right put at 50%. When it comes to the steering, it feels like it's a more soft setting, like in comfort. Uh, and in sport, it actually gets a bit more firm. I'm gonna switch over to sport soon to see and feel the difference. Uh, but the acceleration for sure, a very big difference. It's like a totally different car. And <laughs> uh, it's messing with me. Dry ride systems, thinking I'm driving a bit crazy, which uh, I understand. Let's switch over to sport and see if we feel any difference. <laughs> the acceleration is far better and it's so much more immediate so much more direct as soon as you touch it it actually gives you uh, a lot more power and you see that the power indicator goes all the way up to the roof so full power available in sports mode the dampers the suspension still on low and uh, it's a bit tighter it's a bit less body roll but it's still not that sporty. I would say it's still 
a bit too soft if you want to push it a bit more because it's leaning a lot still. Let's turn to the left here. Push it a bit. Good control, the anti-spin system actually activated <laughs> at that corner, but it behaves really nice. Even if it's a heavy car, I mean, you feel the weight of the car, you feel the size of it, but the power, the four-wheel drive, the two motors really compensates for that. So the actual difference between the drive modes uh, is several things, but just an easy or quick summary of them is that the biggest difference is the actual behavior of the accelerator and the output power. So then there is like ride height, uh, some eco functions on the AC and uh, comfort for the suspension. Those settings doesn't give you the same immediate difference in the feeling when driving the car. The biggest difference is how the accelerator behaves. Even if there's other functions, that's the biggest takeaway between the different drive modes. The Zeker is equipped with one pedal driving, or it says like e-pedal. Um, and that means that you can drive it with only a right foot with the accelerator. And let's see if it comes to a full stop. It does, so full stop. It also activates the brake automatically, so that's good at the traffic lights. And it's nice because it comes to a full stop. One thing that I have noticed is that it takes some time to engage the maximum region because the first like five or six meters, maybe 10 meters above a certain speed, it keeps rolling. So for instance, now I'm gonna say when I let go of the accelerator, I'm rolling, let go. Now it stops regening. That's a bit hard to get used to because when driving on one pedal setting, I'm used to the immediate region that uh, most of the brands have but this one delays it, probably by purpose, as the accelerator, to be able to create a more comfortable ride for the passengers, because the passengers doesn't know when you let go of the accelerator, and uh, if you let go too fast, that will be a very unpleasant ride if you don't know how to drive the car. So it's a bit unforgiving when it comes to comfort but it is also a bit unprecise if you're used to one pedal driving so region has two modes standard or high uh, and when you set it to high you can also set it to one pedal and you can deactivate it fully and only switch between standard and high. That means that you have more region, but it doesn't come to a fully stop, I think. Let me see. Yeah, so it keeps rolling. Uh, if you set it to standard and switch one pedal off, then it's not coasting. It's still regening a good amount, not as much as at high. and not even close to coasting. Set drive mode to comfort. Setting driving mode to comfort. Okay, so comfort is activated and I'm getting ready for some gravel and potholes. I'm always try trying to do this on the same road to be able to compare the different suspensions. Let's see how this behaves. I mean, it is a heavy car with low profile tires uh, so not the best settings for a comfortable ride but the insulation seems really good in the in the wheel arches uh, doesn't make that much of a gravel noise 
still behaves good and you feel the air suspension. I mean, I have heard people say that the suspension is too harsh, uh, even in comfort, but I really disagree. I think uh, the, the suspension is comfy and nice and it handles uneven surfaces in a remarkably good way. I think it's time to summarize my view on the Zeker 001 Privilege. I've been driving it for a week, as I said at the beginning of the video, and this is one of my favorite cars currently on the market because uh, it checks all the important boxes for me. It has decent range, I mean 585 kilometers at least on paper, big battery pack, good charging. The last thing is really the interior space and the looks of the car. I mean, I think it looks stunning. The wide stance, the sport to look, it's a different car and you, you can't confuse it with anything else. Premium interior and good materials, nice layout, not too crowded, not too spartan, a really nice blend. The only thing that lets me down a bit is the front seats. I mean, they are nice to drive and nice to sit in, but I'm missing the thigh support and the adjustable headrests. And that's something that I would have included in such a premium car. The Zeker 001 starts at 60,000 euros or 680,000 Swedish crowns. That's for the real wheel drive version uh, and not the privilege package. This one though costs 780,000 Swedish crowns. I mean, that's a lot of money, but when you actually look at what you get, it's, I think it's a bargain compared to the alternatives on the market. And I know that some of you have asked me, can you please compare it to a BYD Han or a BYD Seal? I have tested both those cars. Uh, BYD Han is or should be a bit more premium than the Seal, but it is not, it just feels older. The Seal, I prefer the Seal over the Han, but uh, I much prefer the Zeker 001 over the BYD Seal. Uh, first off, it's, it's a bit of a bigger car, so it's a bit hard to compare and it's also not playing in the same segment. I mean, the BYD Seal is a good car, but it is not a premium car. This is a premium car and you can really tell by the quality, the materials, especially at the interior. Uh, it has a bit more space, that's another thing. But the quality of the car is a notch up and that's very obvious. Uh, so why would, I, I would really pick the Zeker over the BYD Seal. But uh, there's also some personal opinions involved in that. If you look into the Geely spectrum, um, you know that Polestar, Volvo, Lotus, Zeker, all under the same umbrella, utilizing sometimes the same platforms. So this car is actually built on the same platform as the Electre, the Lotus Electre, and the uh, Polestar 4, the recently released one. Among those brands, this my listing would be Polestar, Volvo, Zeker, Lotus. And I think Zeker is the sweet spot. I mean, there is a couple of caveats still. The software is good, it's really good, but there is some things to fix still. Uh, some translations, some information is not really in place yet. And the self-driving capabilities are probably not as bad as in the beginning and is really usable. Uh, I'm actually recorded some more information about that in my upcoming range test. So stay tuned for that. I put the link up here when it's ready. Uh, then I will talk a bit more about the, the LCC system. It works good, but it has some rough edges. So stay tuned for that. I think that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe, like and engage. Let me know what you think about this car. Do you think it's smart to have beige back seats and blue front seats? Share your experience, ask me questions. I'll try to answer them as fast and as good as possible. As usual, stay electric. Thank you for watching. Speak to you soon.